I learn in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to our home. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort, and, and none of name. A victory is twice itself when the Achiever brings home full numbers. I find here that Don Pedro hath bestowed much honor on a young man called Claudio. Much deserved on his part, and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. I pray you, is Signor Mantanta returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There was none such in the army of any sort. What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Signor Benedict. Oh! He's returned, as pleasant as ever he was. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed I promise to eat all of his killing. Faith, niece, you tax Signor Benedict too much, but he'll be meet with you, I doubt it not. He hath done good service in these wars, and a good soldier too, lady. And a good soldier too, a lady. But what is he to a lord? A, a lord to a lord? A man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. It is so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing... Well, we are all mortal. <laughs> you must not, madam, mistake my niece. There is a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. Is it possible? <laughs> Very easily possible. He wears his faith but as the fashion of his hat. It ever changes with the next block. I see, lady. The gentleman is not in your books. No. And he were, I would burn my study. But I pray you, who is his companion? He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he hath caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pounds ere he be cured. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonardo! Are you come to meet your trouble? The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. For trouble being gone, comfort should remain. But when you depart from me, sorrow abides and happiness takes his leave. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her mother hath many times told me so. <laughs> Will you indulge her that you asked her? <laughs> if, if she only not to be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders <laughs> as like him as she is. <laughs> still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady, disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat. <laughs> but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you accepted. And I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart. I truly love none. A dear happiness to women. They would also have been troubled with the pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God, keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse than were such a face as yours were. Well, you are a very pair of teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. Why would my horse have the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer? But keep your way. In God's name, I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my dear friend Leonardo, hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at the least a month, and he heartily prays that some occasion may detain us longer. <laughs> Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please it your grace lead on. We will go together. Benedict, this thou not the daughter of Signor Leonardo? Uh, I know her not, but I looked on her. 
She's not a modest young lady. Uh, do you question me as an honest man should do? For my simple, true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, in faith, uh, me thinks she's too low for a high praise, <laughs> uh, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome, and being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Th thou thinkest I am in sport. No, I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likes her. Uh, would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? <laughs> Yea, and a case to put it into. In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. So I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. Uh, there's her cousin, and she were possessed with such a fury, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. Wait, I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I, I would scarce trust myself, but I had sworn the contrary if Hero would be my wife. Is it come to this? Shall I never see a bachelor three score again? <laughs> uh, look, Don Pedro has returned to seek you. What secret have held you here that you fought not to Leonardo's? I would, your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. Are you hear Count Claudio? I can be secret as a dumb man. I would have you think so. But on my allegiance, mark you this, on my allegiance, he is in love. Now with who that is your grace's part? Mark how short his answer is. With Hero, Leonardo's daughter. Amen if you love her, for the lady is well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. And that she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she is worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. <laughs> that a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But I will do myself the right to trust none. I will live a bachelor. <laughs> I shall see thee ere I die, look pale with love. So, with anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Well, as time shall try. In time, the savage bull doth bear the yoke. And the savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted and in such great letters, right? Here is good horse to hire. Uh, let them signify under my sign. Here you may see Benedict, the married man. In the meantime, good senior Benedict, prepare to Leonardo's. Commit me to him. And so I leave you. My liege, your highness may now do me good. My love is dying to teach. Hath Leonardo any son, my lord? No child but hero. She's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with the soldier's eye. That liked, but had a rougher task in hand than to drive liking in the name of love. But now I am returned, and those war thoughts have left their places vacant. In their rooms came thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou wilt be like a lover presently, entirely hero with the book of words. If thou dost love fair hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero that I am Claudio, and in her bosom I will unclasp my heart, and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale, and then after with her father will I break, and the conclusion is, she shall be thine. What the good year, my lord? Why are you thus out of measure sad? There's no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore, sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. When I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause, and smile at no man's jest. Sleep when I am drowsy, and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace. 
I'd rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than a fashion a carriage to rob love from any. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest woman, it must not be denied, but I am a plain-dealing villain. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? What news brought you? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince your brother is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio. Even he. Mm, a proper squire. Which way looks he? Mary, on Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonardo. How came you to this? I heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. This may prove food to my displeasure. Thy young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. You are both sure, and will assist me? To the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. Their cheer is greater that I am subdued. Shall we go prove what's to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. Was not Count John here at supper? I saw her not. How tardly that gentlewoman looks. I never can see her but am heartburned an hour after. She is of a very melancholy disposition. It were an excellent person that were made just in the midway between her and Benedict. The one is too like an image and says nothing, and the other is too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. By my troth, niece, thou wilt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. <laughs> oh, Lord, I could never endure a husband with a beard on his face. You may light on a husband that hath no beard. And what should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? He that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man, and he that is more than a youth, well, is not for me, and he that is less than a man, well, I am not for him. Well, daughter, I trust you will be ruled by your father. Yes, faith, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please you. But yet for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. Well, niece, I hope to see you one day find a husband. Ha! Not till God make men of some other metal than earth. Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a valiant piece of dust? No, uncle, I'll none. The revelers are entering. Make good room. and look sweetly and say nothing. I'm yours for the walk, and especially when I walk away. With me in your company? I may say so when I please. And when please you say so? When I like your favor, for God defend the loot should be like the case. Speak low if you speak love. Will you not tell me who told you so? No, you shall pardon me. Nor will you not tell me who you are? Not at no. all. That I was disdainful, and that I had my good wit out of the hundred merry tales. Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. Uh, what's he? What's he? I am sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? Oh, I pray, I pray you, what's he? 
Why, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but libertines delight in him, and the commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy, for he both pleases men and angers them, so that they laugh at him and beat him. I am sure he is in the fleet. I would he had boarded me. When I know this gentleman, I will tell him what he says. Do, do. He'll but break a comparison or two on me, which, peradventure not marked or not laughed at, strikes him into melancholy. And then there's a partridge wing saved, for the poor fool will eat no supper that night. Oh, we must follow the leaders. In every good thing. Nay, if they lead to any ill, I will leave them at the next turning. Sure, my brother's amorous on Hero, and hath withdrawn her father to break with him about it. The ladies follow her, and but one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Are you not Signor Benedict? You know me well. I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother and his love. He is enamored on Hero, and I pray you dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. So did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let us to the banquet. Thus answer I in name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so. The prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things, save in the office and affairs of love. Therefore, all hearts in love use their own tongues. Let every eye negotiate for itself, and trust no agent, for beauty is a witch, against the, whose charms faith melteth into blood. Count Claudio. Yea, the same. The prince has got your hero. I wish him joy of her. But did you think the prince would serve you thus? I pray you, leave me. Oh, now you strike like the blind man. If it will not be, I'll leave you. <laughs> Alas, poor her foul, now he creep into sedges. <laughs> but that my Beatrice should know me and not know me. I, the, uh, the prince is full. I is, ha, it may be I go under that title because I am married. Mm. Yay, but so I am apt to do myself wrong. I, I am not so reputed. Now, senor, where's the count? Did you see him? Uh, truth, my lord, I found him here as melancholy as a lodge in a warren. Uh, I told him, and I think I told him too, that your grace had got the goodwill of this young lady. The lady Beatrice have a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her that she was much wronged by you. <laughs> oh, well, oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. Uh, she told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester, a uh, huddling jest upon jest upon me with such impossible conveyance that I stood like a man at a mark with a whole army shooting at me. Uh, she speaks poniards, and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations during her living near her, uh, she would infect to the North Star. Uh, I wouldn't marry her, though she were endowed with all that Adam had left before he transgressed. Come, talk not of her. Look, here she comes. Oh, will your grace commit me in these service to the world's end? I would rather fetch you a toothpicker now from the furthest inch of Asia than to hold three words conference with this harpy. You have no employment for me? None, but to desire your good company. God, sir, this is a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent of me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Mary, once before he wanted of me with false ties. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. So I should not he should do me, my lord, lest I should prove the mother of fools. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Why how now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. The Count is something of that jealous complexion. Here, Claudio, I have wood in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his good will obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortune. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count, tis your cue. 
silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I give myself away to you and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin. Or if you cannot, then stop his mouth with a kiss and let him not speak neither. In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. <laughs> Yea, my lord, I thank it, poor fool, it keeps on the windy side of care. Ah, oh, my cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. Good lord for a lion's, thus goes everyone to the world but I. I may sit in a corner and cry, hi-ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. I would rather have one of your father's getting. Hath your grace ne'er a brother like you? Will you have me, lady? No, your grace, unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I beseech your grace, pardon me, for I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. To be merry best becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, sure, my mother cried. But then there was a star danced, and under that was I born. Cousins, God give you joy! By my tro, the pleasant-spirited lady! There is little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never sad but when she sleeps, and not ever sad then. For I have heard my daughter say she hath oft dreamt of unhappiness, and waked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Ugh, by no means. She mocks all the wooers out of suit. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, lord, my lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. Come, I will undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Senior Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection, thy one with the other. If you three will such minister me in assistance, and I shall give you direction. My lord, I am for you. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero? I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good husband. And Benedict is not the unhopefulest husband that I know. Thus far can I praise him. He is of a noble strain, of approved valor, and of confirmed honesty. If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, my lord but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be menaceful to me. How canst thou cross this marriage? So covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favor of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to hero. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out her lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go to the prince your brother and Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. They will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances which shall bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window, hear me call Margaret Hero. Bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding, for in the meantime I will so fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent and there shall appear such seeming truth of hero's disloyalty that jealousy shall be called assurance and all the preparation overthrown. I will put it in practice. Be cutting in the workingness, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Be you constant in your accusation, and my cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn the day of marriage. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow pallies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man as Claudio, uh, he was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. And now is he turned orthography. Uh, his words are such very <laughs> fantastical banquets. <laughs> so many strange dishes. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I, I cannot tell. I, I think not. <sighs> uh, okay, one moment is fair. 
yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtue is, <laughs> yet I am well. But to all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come into my grace. Uh, rich, she shall be that is certain, wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Fair, or I'll never look on her. Uh, mild, or come not near me. Noble, or not I for an angel. Uh, of good discourse, an excellent musician. And her hair, her hair shall be of what it please God. Ha! The prince and miss your love. I will go hide me in the arbor. Yea, my good lord, how still the evening is, as hushed on purpose to grace harmony. See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord. The music ended will fit the kid fox in a pennyworth. Come, Balthazar, we'll hear that song again. By my troth, a good song. And an ill singer, my lord. Ha! <laughs> no, no, Faith. He sings well enough for a shift. I pray God his bad voice bold no mischief. Babazar, I pray thee get us some excellent music for tomorrow night. We would have it at the Lady Hero's chamber window. Farewell. Come hither, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today? That your niece, Beatrice? Is in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, I? I did never think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Since the wind in this corner. By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it. But that she loves him with an enraged affection, it is past the infinite of thought. You amaze me! I would have thought her spirit would have been invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. Has she made her affections known to Benedict? No, and she swears she never will, and that's her torment. Tis true indeed, so your daughter says, shall I, says she, that so have oft encountered him with scorn, Write to him that I love him. This says she now when she is beginning to write to him, for she'll be up twenty times a night, and there she will sit in her smock till she have read a sheet of paper. My, my daughter tells us all. Now, you talk of a sheet of paper, I remember. A pretty jest your daughter told us of? Oh, when she had read it and was reading it over, she found Benedict and Beatrice between the sheet. Oh, she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, railed at herself that she should be so immodest to write to one that she knew would flout her. Then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God, give me patience. <laughs> she doth indeed. My daughter says so, and the ecstasy has so much overborne her that my daughter is sometimes afeard she will do a desperate outrage to herself. It's very true. It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she would not discover it. To what end? He would make but a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should! It were an alms to hang him. She's an excellent sweet lady, and out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. 
and she is exceeding wise. And everything but in loving Benedict. Oh, my lord, I am sorry for her, and I have just cause being her uncle and her guardian. I pray thee you tell Benedict of it, and hear what he will say. Were it good, think you? Hero thinks surely she will die, for she says she will die if he love her not, and she will die ere she makes her love known. She doth well. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible to scorn it, for the man, as know all, hath a contemptible heart. He is a very proper man. He hath indeed a good outward happiness. Before God, and in my mind, very wise. He doth indeed show some sparks of that are like wit. Shall we go seek Benedict and tell him of her love? Oh, never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. Nay, yeah, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out first. Well, we will hear further of it from your daughter. Let it cool the while. I love Benedict, and I could wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. If he do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. Let there be the same net spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewoman carry. The sport will be when they hold one opinion of another's dotage. That's the scene that I would see, which will merely be a dumb show. Let us send her to call him into dinner. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from a hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me. Why, it must be requited. Uh, they say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. Uh, they say too that she would rather die than give any sign of affection. I, I did never think to marry. Huh. I, I must not seem proud. Happy are they that can hear the detractions that could put them to mending. They say the lady is fair. Uh, tis the truth I can bear them witness, and virtuous tis so I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me, uh, by my troth it is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument of her folly. For I will be horribly in love with her. I, I may have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me, because I have rose so long against marriage. Uh, but doth not the appetite alter? Uh, shall quips and senses and the paper bullets of the brain awe oh, man from the career of his humor? No! The world must be peopled. Uh, when I said I would die a bachelor, then I think I would live till I were married. Uh, here comes Beatrice. By this day, she is a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. Ah, so you take pleasure then in the message. Yea, just so much as you might find upon a knife's point, Signor. Fare you well. <laughs> Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into dinner. There's a double meaning in that. I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. That's as much as to say any pains that I take for you is as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity on her, I am a villain. I will get her picture. Good Margaret, run thee to the parlor. There shalt thou find my cousin Beatrice proposing with the prince and Claudia. Whisper her ear and tell her I and Ursula walk in the orchard, and our whole discourse is all of her. There will she hide her to listen to our propose. This is thy office. I'll make her come. I warrant you presently. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be a Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part, to praise him more than ever man did merit. Now begin. For look where Beatrice like a lapwing runs close by the ground to hear our conference. Pleasant's angling is to see the fish, cut with her golden oars, silver stream, and greedily devour the treacherous bait. So angle we for Beatrice, who even now is couched in the woodbine coverture. Fear you not my part of the dialogue. Then go we near her, for her ear lose nothing of this false sweet bait that we lay for it. 
No, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Pendic loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new chosen lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They didn't treat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them, if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection and never to let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Oh, God of love! Nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, misprising what they look upon, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. She cannot love, nor take no shape nor project of affection. She is so self-endeared. Sure, I think so. And therefore it were not good she knew his love, lest she'll make sport at it. Why, you speak truth. Fair face, she should swear the gentleman should be her sister. If tall, a lancel headed, if low, an agate very vilely cut. If speaking, why, a vein blown with all winds. If silent, why, a block moved with none. So turn she every man the wrong side out, and never give to truth and virtue that which merit purchaseth. But who dare tell her so? If I should say so, she would laugh me out of myself, press me to death with wit. Therefore let Benedict like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. Yet tell her of it, hear what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict, and counsel him to fight against his passion, and truly I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. One doth not know how much an ill word may empoison liking. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be without much true judgment having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man of Italy. Always accepted, my dear Claudio. I pray you be not angry with me, madam, speaking my fancy, Signor Benedict, for shape, for bearing argument and valor, goes foremost in report through Italy. Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it ere he had it. When are you married, madam? Why, every day tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel, which is the best to furnish me tomorrow. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, and some with traps. What fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? Contempt farewell, and maiden pride adieu. No glory lives behind the backs of such. And, Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. Gallants, I am not as I have been. <laughs> so say I, if he thinks you're sadder. I hope he be in love. Hang him, Truin! There's no true drop of blood in him that truly be touched with love. Yet, say I, he is in love. There's no appearance of fancy in him, unless it be a fancy that he hath the strange disguises. If he be not in love with some woman, there be no believing in old signs. Indeed, he looks younger than he did by the loss of a beard. And when was he wont to wash his face? Indeed, that tells a heavy tale for him. Conclude, he is in love? Well, senor, walk aside with me. I have studied eight or nine words that I must speak to you, which these hobby horses must not hear. For my life to break with him about Beatrice. Tis even so. Hero and Margaret have played their part with Beatrice, and then the two bears will not bite when they meet one another again. Good evening, sister. If your leisure served, I would speak with you. In private? If it please you, yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that, when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. I came hither to tell you when circumstances shorten, she has been too long a talking of. The lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she. 
Leonardo's hero, your hero, every man's hero. Disloyal. The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. I could say she were worse. Think you have a worse title? Now we'll fit her to it. Wonder not till further warrant. Go but with me tonight. You shall see her chamber window entered even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. But it better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If you'll follow me, I will show you enough. If I see anything tonight, why I should not marry her. Tomorrow in the congregation, where I should wed, there will I shame her. And as I would for thee to obtain her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. I will disparage her no farther till you are my witnesses. Bear her coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. O oh, day untwirledly turned. O oh, mischief strangely thwarting. O oh, plague right well prevented. So you will say when you have seen the sequel. Are you good men and true? Yea, or else it were pity, but they should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them if they should have any allegiance in them, being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give them their charge, neighbor Dogberry. First, who think you the most deservable man to be constable? Hugh Oakcake, sir, or George Seacole, for they can write and read. Come hither, neighbor Seacole. God has blessed you with a good name. To be well favored is a gift of fortune, but to read and write comes by nature. Both which, Master Constable? You have. I knew it would be your answer. Well, for your favor, sir, why, give God thanks and make no boast of it. And for your writing and reading, let that appear when there is no need for such vanity. You are thought here to be the most senseless and fit man for the Constable of the Watch. Therefore, Bear you the lantern. This is your chart. You shall comprehend all vagrant You are to bid any man stand in the prince's name. How if he will not stand? Why then, take no note of him, but let him go and presently call the rest of the watch together and thank God you are rid of a knave. If he will not stand when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True. And they are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets, for for the watch to babble and to talk is most tolerable and not to be endured. We will rather sleep than talk. We know what belongs to a watch. I cannot see how sleeping should offend. Only have a care that your arms be not stolen. Well, you are to call at the alehouses and bid those that are drunk. Get them to bed. How if they will not? Why then? Let them alone till they are sober. If they make you not, then the better answer you may say they are not the men you took them for. If you meet a thief, you may suspect him by the virtue of your office to be no true man. And for such kind of men, the less you meddle or the more you miss them, why, the more is your honesty. If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? Truly, by your office you may. But I think... They that touch pitch will be defiled. The most peaceable way for you, if you do take a thief, is to let him show himself what he is and steal out of your company. You've always been called a merciful man, partner. Truly. I would not hang a dog by my will, much more a man who has any honesty in him. If you hear a child cry in the night, you must call to the nurse and bid her to still it. How if the nurse be asleep and will not hear us? Why... Then depart at peace, and let the child wake her with cry. For the ewe that will not hear her lamb when it baas, will not answer a calf when it bleats. Tis very true. This is the end of your charge. You, constable, are to present the prince's own person. If you meet the prince at night, you may stay him. Nay, by your lady, I think that he cannot. Five shillings to one aunt, with any man that knows the statues, he may stay him. Marry not without the prince be willing, for indeed the watch ought to offend no man, and it is an offense to stay a man against his will. By your lady, 
I think it be so. <laughs> well, masters, good night. And there be any matter of weight chances, call up me. One word more, honest neighbors. I pray you watch about Signor Leonato's door. For the wedding being there tomorrow, there is a great coil tonight. Adio. Be vigilant. I beseech you. What, Conrad? Peace, stir not. Here, woman, I'm at thy elbow. Stand thee close, then, and I will, like a true drunkard, utter all to thee. Some treason, master, is yet stand close. Therefore, no. I have earned of Don John a thousand ducats. Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? D didst thou hear somebody? No. Know that I have tonight wooed Margaret, the Lady Hero's gentlewoman, by the name of Hero. She leans me out at her mistress's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. I should first tell thee how the prince, Claudio, and my master Don John saw far off in the orchard this amiable encounter. And thought they Margaret was Hero? Two of them did, the prince and Claudio, but the devil my master knew she was Margaret and partly by the dark night, which did deceive them, but chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander that Don John had made, away went Claudio, enraged, swore he would meet her as he was appointed there the next morning at the temple, and there, before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw overnight, and send her home again without a husband. We charge you in the prince's name, stand! We have here recovered the most dangerous piece of lead tree that has ever known to the commonwealth. Masters, never speak. We charge you. Let us obey you to go with us. Come. We'll obey you. Good Ursula. Wake my cousin Beatrice and bid her come hither. Well. Troth, I think your other garment were better. No, pray thee, good Meg. I'll wear this. By my troll is not so good, and I warrant your cousin will say so. My cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. God give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceeding heavy. Twill be heavier soon by the weight of a man. Fie upon thee! Art not ashamed? Of what, lady? Is there any harm in thee heavier for a husband? None, I think. And it be the right husband and the right wife. Ask my lady Beatrice else. Here she comes. Tis almost five o'clock, cousin. Tis time you were ready. Oh, by my troth, I am exceeding ill. I hope For a hawk, a horse, or a husband. <laughs> For the letter that begins them all, H. These flowers the Count sent me. They have an excellent perfume. I am stuffed, cousin. I cannot smell. A maid and stuffed? There's goodly catching of cold. Oh, God help me, God help me! How long have you professed apprehension? Ever since you left it, doth not my wit become me rarely? <laughs> it is not seen enough. You should wear it in your cap. Oh, by my troth, I am sick. <laughs> Get you some of this distilled Cardus Benedictus and lay it to your heart. It's the only thing for calm. There thou prickster with a thistle. Benedictus. Why Benedictus? You have some moral in this, Benedictus? Moral? No, by my troth, I have no moral meaning. I meant plain holy thistle. You may think, perchance, that I think you are in love. Nay, by lady, I am not such a fool to think what I list, nor I list not to think what I can. Nor indeed I cannot think if I would think my heart out, out of thinking that you are in love, or that you will be in love, or that you can be in love. Yet Benedict was such another. He swore he would never marry, and yet now, in despite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. And how you may be converted, I know not. But methinks you look with your eyes as other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Not a false gallop. <laughs> Madam, withdraw. The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. 
help to dress me. Good cuss, good neck, good Ursula. What would you with me, honest neighbor? Marry, sir. I would have some confidence that discerns you nearly. Brief, I pray you, for you see it is a busy time with me. Mary, this it is, sir. Yes, in truth it is, sir. What is it, my good friends? Good man Virgil speaks little off the matter. An old man, sir, and his wits are not so blunt as God help. I would desire they were, but in faith, honest as skin between his brows. Yes, I thank God that I am as honest as any man living. That That is an old man, and no honester than I. Comparisons are odorous. Palibris, neighbor verges. Neighbors, you're tedious. It places your worship to say so, but we are the poor duke's officers. I would fain know what you have to say. Mary, sir, our, our watch tonight, accepting your worship's presence, had attained a couple of errant knaves as any. A good old man, sir, he will be talking, as they say. When the age is in, the wit is out. And two men ride of a horse, one must ride behind. Indeed, neighbor, he comes too short of you. Gift that God gives. I must leave you. One word, sir. Our watch, sir, has indeed comprehended to aspious persons, and we would have them this morning examined before your worship. Take their examination yourself and bring it to me. I am now in great haste, as it may appear unto you. It should be suffigence. Drink some wine ere you go. <laughs> Fare you well. My lord, they stay for you to give your daughter to her husband. I'll wait upon them. I am... Ready. Go, good partner. Get you to Francis Sequel, bid him bring his pen and inkhorn to the jail. We are now to examination these men. And we must do it wisely. We will spare for no wit, I warrant you. Only get the learned writer to set down our excommunication and meet me at the jail. Come, Friar Francis, be brief. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady? No. To be married to her, Friar, you come to marry her. Lady, you come hither to be married to this count. I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any, hero? None, my lord. Know you any, count? I dare make his answer, none. Know what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do, not knowing what they do. How now, interjections? Why, uh, some be of laughing. <laughs> Stand thee by, friar. Father, by your leave, will you, with free and unconstrained soul, give me this maid, your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. There, Leonardo, take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold here how she blushes like a maid. Oh, what authority and show of truth can cunning sin cover itself with all? Would you not assume, all you that see, that she was a maid by her exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed, and, well, she blushes in guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved wanton. Dear my lord, if you in your own proof have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her virginity... I know what you would say if I had known her. You would say that she has embraced me as a husband, and so extenuate the forehand sin. No, Leonardo, I have never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to his sister, showed calmly love and bashful sincerity. And seemed I ever otherwise to you? Out on thee, seeming. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored that I have gone about to link my dear friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, they are spoken, and these things are true. <laughs> this looks not like a nuptial. True, oh God! What kind of catechizing call you this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not a hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? Mary, that can, hero. Hero itself can blot out hero's virtue. What man was he talked with you yesternight? Outside of your window, betwixt twelve and one. Now, if you were a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why then are you no maiden? 
Leonardo, I am sorry. You must hear upon mine honor, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with the referee at her chamber window, who hath indeed like a liberal villain, and expressed the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. Fie, fie, they are not to be named, my lord, not to be spoke of. O oh, hero, what a hero hast thou been, if half thy outward graces have been placed about thy thoughts and counsels of thy heart. But I fare thee well, most foul, most fair. For thee, I'll lock up all gates of love. And no man's dagger here a point for me. Why, how now, cousin? Wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light, smother her spirits up. H how doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle! Hero, what hero? Uncle, Signor Benedict, friar! Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame that may be wished for. Oh, how now, cousin Hero? Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Why doth not every earthly thing cross shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is printed in her blood? Do not live, Hero. Do not ope thine eyes. Why ever wast thou lovely in my eyes? But mine, and mine I loved, and mine I praised, and mine that I was proud on, mine so much that I myself was to myself not mine. Valuing of her, why she... Oh, she's fallen into a pit of ink that the wide sea hath drops too few to wash her clean again. Oh, sir, sir, be patient. For my part, I am so attired in wonder, I do not know what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you at Bedfellow last night? No, truly not. Although until last night, I have this twelve month been her bedfellow. Would the two princes lie and Claudio lie, who loved her so that speaking of her foulness washed it with tears? Hear me a little, for I've only silent been so long, and given way into this course of fortune by noting of the lady. I have marked a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face, and in her eye there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my age, my reference calling her no divinity. If this sweet lady lie not guiltless here on some biting error. Friar, it cannot be. She not denies it. Why seekst thou then to cover with excuse that which appears in proper nakedness? Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that do accuse me, I know none. If I know more of any man alive than that which maiden modesty doth warn, let all my sins lack mercy. O oh, my father, prove you that any man with me conversed at hours unmeet, refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. There was some strange misprison in the princes. The two of them have their very bent of honor. And if their wisdom be misled in this, uh, the practice lives in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil in the frame of villainies. I know not. If they speak but truth of her, these hands shall tear her. If they wrong her, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Pause a while, and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here the prince is left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in, and publish it that she is dead indeed. What shall become of this? What will this do? She dying, as it must be so maintained, upon the instant that she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. For it so falls out that what we have we prize not to the worth while we enjoy it, but being lacked and lost. Why then, we find the virtue of possession would not show us while it was ours. So will it fare with Claudio. When he shall hear she died upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination. Then shall he mourn, and wish he had not so accused her. No, though he thought his accusation true. Uh, Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. Tis well consented. Presently away, come, lady, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. <laughs> lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. Oh, I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Uh, surely I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. Ah, uh, how much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. 
<sighs> I, I do love none in the world so as much as you. It's not that strange. As strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I love nothing so much as you. But believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. Oh, I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? Uh, with no sauce that can be devised to it, I protest I love thee. Why then, God, forgive me. Oh, for what offense, we Beatrice. You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. Oh, and do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. <laughs> Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. D uh, Terry, sweet Beatrice. I am gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. Nay, I pray you let me go. Beatrice. In faith, I will go. We will be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height a villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh God, that I were a man! What, take her in hand until they come to take hands? And then with uh, public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor! Oh God, that I were a man! I would eat his heart in the marketplace! Hear me, Beatrice! Oh, talk with a man out of the window! A proper saying! Oh, nay, but Beatrice! Hero, she is wronged, she is slandered, she is undone! Oh, God, that I were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend who would be a man for my sake. But manhood is melted into curtsies, valor into compliment, and men are only turned into tongues and trim ones too. He is now as valiant as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore I shall die a woman with grieving. Terry, sweet Beatrice, by this hand I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Thank you in your soul that Count Claudio hath wronged Hero. Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough, I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will hold you to my heart, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio will render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so farewell. As our whole dissembly appeared. Oh, a stool and a cushion for the sexton. Which be the male factors? Mary, Dad am I, and my partner. But which are the offenders that are to be examined? Let them come before the Master Constable. Yea, Mary, let them come before me. What is your name, friend? Baraccio. Pray, write down Baraccio. Yours, Sarah? I am a woman, sir, and my name is Conrad. Write down Master Gentle Woman, Conrad. Masters? Do you serve God? Yes, yes sir. We hope. we hope. Write down they hope they serve God. And write God first, for God defund, but God should go before such a villain. Come you hither, Sarah, a word in your ear. Sir, I say to you, it is taught that you are false knaves. Sir, I say to you that we are none. Well, stand aside, for God they are both in a tale. Have you written down that they are none? Masters, I charge you in the prince's name, accuse these men. This woman said, sir, that Don John, the prince's sister, was a villain. Write down Prince John of Why, this is flat perjury! To call a prince's sister villain? Master Constable? Mm, pray thee, fellow peace, I do not like thy look, I promise thee. What heard you her say else? Mary, that she had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady here wrongfully, and that Count Claudio, 
did mean upon his words to disgrace her before the whole assembly and not marry her. Oh, villain, thou will be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. What else? This is all. Prince John is this morning recently stolen away. Hero was in this manner accused and this very manner refused, and upon the grief of this suddenly died. Master Constable, let these women be bound and brought to Leonardo's. I will go before and show him their examination. Come, let them be opinioned. Let them be in the hands of the- Off, coxcomb! God's my life! Where's the sexton? Let her write down the prince's officer, coxcomb. Come, bind them. Thou naughty varlet! Away! You are an ass, you are an ass! Does that not suspect my place? Does that not suspect my years? Oh, that she were here to write me down an ass. But masters, remember that I am an ass, though not written down. Yet not forget that I am an ass. No, thou villain, thou art full of piety, as shall be proved upon thee by good witness. I am a wise fellow, and which is more an officer, and which is more a householder, and which is more a pretty little piece of flesh as any is, and one that knows the law. Go to, bring them away. Oh, that I had been rid down an ass. Hear you, my lords. We have some haste, Leonardo. Mary, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler thou. Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword, I fear thee not. Thou hast so wronged mine innocent child and me that I am forced to lay my reverence by, and with gray hairs and bruise of many days do challenge thee to a trial of a man. I say, thou hast belied mine innocent child. Thy slander has gone through and through her heart, and she lies buried with her ancestors framed by thy villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right, old man. My lord, my lord. I will not hear you. No, I will be heard, and <laughs> shall or some of us will smart for it. See, see, here's the man we went to seek. Now, senor, what news? Good day, my lord. Welcome, senor. I have come to seek you both. We have come up and down to seek thee. We are high-proof melancholy, and would fain have it beaten away. Wilt thou use thy wit? What is in my scabbard? Shall I draw it? Dost thou wear thy wit by thy side? As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? Shall I speak a word in your ear? God bless me, from a challenge. You are a villain, I jest not. I will make it good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right, or I shall protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. He had bid me to a calf's head and a capon, the which if I do not carve most curiously, say my knife's not. Shall I not find a woodcock too? Oh, fare you well, boy. You know my mind. You break just as braggers do their blades, which, God be thanked, hurt not. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your sister, the bastard, has fled from here. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord Lagbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with you. He is in earnest. In most profound earnest, and I'll warrant you, for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee? Most sincerely. Did he not say my sister was fled? Come you, sir, if justice cannot tame you, she shall ne'er weigh more raisins in her balance. Officer, what offense have these women done? Mary, sir, they, they have committed false report. Moreover, they have spoken untruth. Secondarily, they are slanders. Six and lastly, they have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, they are lying knaves. Who have you offended, masters, that you are thus bound to your answer? This learned constable is too cunning to be understood. What's your offense? Sweet prince, let me go no farther in mine answer. Do you hear me, and let this count kill me. 
I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light, who in the night overheard me confessing to this woman how Don John, your sister, incensed me to slander the Lady Hero, how you were brought into the orchard and saw me court Margaret in Hero's garments, how you disgraced her when you should marry her. My villainy they have upon record, which I'd rather seal with my death than repeat over to my shame. The lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation, and briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs not this speech like iron through your blood. I have drunk poison while she's uttered it. But did my sister set thee on this? Yea, and paid me richly for the practice of it. She is composed and framed of treachery, and fled she is upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now the image doth appear in the rare semblance that I loved her first. Come, bring away the plaintiff. By this time our sexton has reformed Signor Leonardo of the matter. And masters, do not forget to specify when the time and place shall serve. That I am an ass. Here, here comes Master Signor Leonardo, and the sexton too. Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes. If you would know your wronger, look on me. Art thou the knave that with thy breath hast killed mine innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so, villain. Thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable women. A third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princess, for my daughter's death. Recorded with your high and worthy deeds, t'was bravely done if you bethink you of it. I, I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself, impose me to what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet sinned, and I haven't, but in mistaking. By my soul, nor I. And yet to satisfy this good old man, I would bend under any heavy weight that he'll enjoin me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live, that were impossible. But I pray you both, possess the people here how innocent she died. And if your love can labor aught in sad invention, hang her an epitaph upon her tomb and sing it to her bones. Tomorrow morning come you to my house, and since you could not be my son-in-law, be yet my nephew. My brother hath a daughter, and almost the copy of my child, that's dead, and she alone is heir to both of us. Give her the right you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Oh, noble sir, your overkindness doth bring tears to me. I do embrace your offer and dispose for henceforth of poor Claudio. Tomorrow, then, I will expect your coming. This naughty woman shall face to face be brought to Margaret, who I believe was packed in all this wrong. No. By my soul, she knew not of what she did when she spoke to me, but always hath been just and virtuous in anything that I know by her. Moreover, sir, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me as I beseech you, let it be remembered in her punishment. There's for thy pains. God save the foundation. Go, I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. I leave an errant knave in your worship. God keep your worship. I wish your worship well. God restore you to health. I humbly give you leave to depart. And if a merry meeting may be wished, God prohibit it. Come, neighbor. Until tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. We will not fail. Tonight I'll mourn with Hero. Bring you these fellows on. We'll talk with Margaret how her acquaintance grew with this lewd mistress. Pray thee, sweet mistress Margaret, to deserve well on my hand by helping me to the speech of Beatrice. Will you then write me a sonnet in praise of my beauty? In so high a style, Margaret, that no man living can come over it. Uh, for in most comely truth thou deservest it, thy wit is as quick as the greyhound's mouth it catches. And yours as blunt as a fencer's foils, which hit but hurt not. Oh, I give thee the bucklers. Give us a sword. We have bucklers of our own. Well... I will call Beatrice to you, who I think hath legs. And therefore will come.
the God of love that sits above and knows me what and what owes me ah uh, how pitiful I dis I mean in singing uh, but in loving a whole book full of those quantum carpet mongers whose names run smoothly and even wrote of a blank verse why uh, they were never so turned over and over as my poor self in love uh, Mary I cannot say it in rhyme I have tried I cannot find a rhyme for lady, but baby, an innocent rhyme. Uh, for scorn, horn, a hard rhyme. And for school, full, uh, a babbling rhyme. A very ominous endings. Uh, I, no, I was not born under a rhyming planet, nor I cannot <laughs> woo in festival terms. Oh, uh, sweet Beatrice, uh, wouldst thou come when I call thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay but till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well. And yet, ere I go, let me go with that I came, which is with knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. Therefore I will depart unkissed. Thou hast frighted the word out of his right sense, and so forcibly is thy wit. Uh, but I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge. And either I will shortly hear from him, or I will subscribe him a coward. And I pray thee not tell me, which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with? For them all together, which maintain so politic a state of evil that they will do no good part to intermingle with. But for which of my good parts did you first suffer love for me? I suffer love, a good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. In spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart, if you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours, for I will never love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to rule peaceably. It appears not in this confession. There's not one wise man among twenty that will praise himself. If a man is not erected in his age, in his tomb ere he dies, uh, he shall live no longer in monument than the bell rings and the widow weeps. Uh, but now tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God, love me, and mend. There I will leave you. Ah, for one comes in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle. It is proved my lady hero have been falsely accused. The prince and Claudio mightily abused, and Don John is the author of all, who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this news, senor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thy eyes. I, and moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncles. Is this the monument of Leonardo? It is, my lord. Tone to death by slanderous tongues was the hero that here lies. Death and guerdon of her wrongs gives her fame which never dies. So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Hang thou there upon the tone, praising her when I am dumb. Now unto thy bones, good night. Yearly I'll do this right. Come, let us hence and Put on other weeds, and then to Leonardo's we will go. Did I not tell you she was innocent? So are the Prince and Claudio who accused her upon the air that you were debated. But Margaret was in some fault for this, although against her will as it appears. Well, I am glad that all things sort so well. Well, daughter and you gentlewomen all, withdraw into a chamber by yourselves, and when I send for you, come hither masked. The Prince and Claudio promised by this hour to visit me. <sighs> Friar, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, senor? Uh, to bind me or undo me, one of them. Uh, senor Leonardo, truth it is, good senor, 
Your niece desires me with an eye of favor. That eye my daughter lent her, tis most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. The sight whereof I think you add from me, from Claudio and the prince, but what's your will? Uh, your answer, sir, is enigmatical. Uh, but for my will, uh, my will is that your good will stand with ours this day to be conjoined in a state of honorable marriage, in which, good friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help? Oh, here comes the prince and Claudio. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Good morrow, Claudio. Are you yet determined today to marry with my brother's daughter? Call her forth. Here's the friar ready. Good morrow, Benedict. Why, what's the matter that you have such a February face, full of frost, of storm, and cloudiness? I think he would play the noble beast in love. How much like to you, for you have just his bleat. For this I owe you, here comes other reckonings. Which is the lady I must seize upon. This same is she, and I do give you her. Why then, she's mine. Sweet, let me see your face. That you shall not till you take her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand before this holy friar. I am your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. And when you loved, you were my other husband. Another hero! Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live. And surely as I live, I am a maid. The former hero? Hero that is dead. She died, my lord, but whilst her slander lived. All of this amazement can I qualify? When after that the holy rites are ended, I'll tell you largely of fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonder seem familiar. And to the chapel let us presently. Soft and fair, friar. Uh, um, which is Beatrice? I answer to that name. What is your will? Uh, do not you love me? Why, no. No more than reason. Why, then, your uncle and the prince and Claudio have been deceived. They swore you did. Do not you love me? The truth, no. No more than reason. Why, then, my cousin, Margaret, and Ursula are much deceived, for they did swear you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well-nigh dead for me. <laughs> there is no such matter. Uh, then you do not love me. No, truly, but in friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I'm sure you love the gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon it that he loves her. Uh, for here's a paper in his hand, a halting sonnet. Of his own pure brain fashioned to Beatrice. And here's another, written my cousin's hand stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. A miracle! Our own hands against our hearts. Oh, come, I will have thee, but by this light I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this good day I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. A peace. I will stop your mouth. Hey. How dost thou, Benedict the married man? In brief, since I do purpose to marry, I will think nothing to any purpose that the world can say against it, and therefore never flaunt at me for what I have said against it. For man is a giddy thing, and this is my conclusion. Uh, for thy part, Claudio, I did think to have beaten thee, but in that thou art like to be my kinsman, live unbruised, and love my cousin. I had well hoped thou wouldst have denied Beatrice, I, that I might have cudgeled thee out of a single life, to make thee a double dealer, which out of question thou wilt be if my cousin do not look exceeding normally to thee. Oh, come, come, we are friends, let's have a dance, ere we are married, that we may lighten our own hearts and our wives' heels. We'll have dancing afterward. Oh, first of my word, therefore play me... Oh, Prince, oh, thou art sad, but <laughs> get thee a wife, get thee a wife. My lord, your sister John is ta'en in flight and brought with armed men back here. Uh, think not on her till tomorrow. I'll devise thee brave punishments for her. Strike up, pipers. <laughs> <laughs>